Hello there and God bless. I felt led to come on here and make this video. Um, it's a pretty serious topic, um, but as I was reading through the word in Jeremiah 29, 15, um, it says, you claim that the Lord has raised up prophets for you in Babylon. And as I was meditating on that scripture, um, as I felt led by the Lord to that scripture, I didn't know what it meant. And um, pretty much, you know, the Lord started just revealing his heart and it, and it was about, you know, us receiving what we want to hear instead of what's true. And, um, and then he started opening my, my, my heart up to a more serious, uh, matter, which is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I felt he, he said, they reject my spirit. Those who reject my spirit reject me. And um, also that, you know, the fear of the Lord is coming on the church to purify us and get us ready for the return of Jesus Christ. And he doesn't want us to put more weight on what the world says than what he says. Um... And it really comes down to rejecting miracles. It, it, reject By rejecting miracles, we reject him. We reject the Holy Spirit. So this is really a serious warning to Christians who are against deliverance and miracles. Um, blasphemy in the Holy Spirit is a very serious sin. It cannot be forgiven. We know it says that in the word. And I know the Lord wants people to repent if you have come against, you know, what God is doing in this season with um, miracles of, of healing and deliverance, um, it, you know, people who are holding on to their religion and coming against the freedom that God has for his people because he's cleansing his bride, mass deliverance is taking place. And yes, it, it's casting demons out of Christians who are in bondage and um you know there's so much there there's in the bible it talks about you know the Syrophoenician woman who asked to have her daughter not receive deliverance and, and god you know jesus said no it um deliverance is for the children my ch god's children it's the children's bread and deliverance has always been for god's people in egypt he, you know, that mass deliverance exodus was for God's people. And there's a purpose behind the deliverance. And that is so that we can, um, the goal is always so that we can worship God and serve him more. That's what he said. You know, you'd say, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me in the, in the, in the wilderness. Um, so, you know, this really is a warning um, for people to repent and turn back to God wholeheartedly and not put God in a box. If you don't understand what's going on, don't reject it. Ask God, you know, ask God to reveal to you. And, you know, I didn't, I've made other videos of my testimony, but I didn't um, think a Christian could have a demon because when I first got saved, that's what I was told. And, you know, they would use the scripture that light and darkness um, you know, cannot dwell together, but it doesn't say they cannot, it says they should not. <laughs> so uh, when I actually started reading the word and getting the revelation and getting my own deliverance, and then it was real to me and I knew that I had been believing something that was false. And, you know, I never resisted it for other people, but it, 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 you know, there are people that are literally resisting the move of God right now. And I just feel God's heart, please repent. I'm going to read scripture, um, about blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's Matthew 12, 22. Then a demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, him being Jesus, and he healed him. So that man spoke and saw. 
And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. So the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is attached to deliverance, them calling the miracle of Jesus do casting out demons, them attaching it to the power of darkness. So I just, you know, everything I say, take to the Lord. But I really feel like this was heavy on his heart because he loves his people and he doesn't want anyone to perish. Um, but this is a very serious sin. And it's never too late to just repent, you know, uh, God has so many times come to me and said, you're wrong in this area. Um, and then we have a choice. Like if we're going to be stubborn and say, no, it's my way. Or if we're going to say, okay, God, you're right. Like I, I was wrong. Like I laid down my pride and I say, I did. I was believing wrong. I was accepting false doctrine. I know a big problem for me when I first got saved was I would read the word of God and I would get revelation from Holy Spirit, but I had heard something different from the pastor. So I would, I would, instead of questioning the pastor, I would, I would conform my revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me to what the pastor had said. And that is wrong. Uh, we need to conform our thinking to the word of God. And sometimes that means shutting off outside voices for a season so that we can hear God's voice and his revelation um, of the word for ourselves. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who say that deliverance, casting out demons is not for believers, but... Um, that's... That's not biblical because the first deliverance came to God's people <laughs> um, in the in the temple in the um, in the synagogue. Jesus was preaching and a demon started speaking out of a man and screaming out of a man, and he casted him. He cast the demon out. That was the first deliverance recorded. So um, I don't know where people have you know picked up this this false belief that deliverance is only for non-believers. Um, but please, if you agree with that or not, go take this to God yourself and ask, because this is a serious sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit and the work he's doing. And, you know, I know one of the barriers for me of believing that Christians could have a demon is before I understood our authority in Christ and things, I was scared of demons. I was scared of, you know, I just didn't want to think that, oh, I could have a demon. It, The thought, I didn't want to think that. So it was a safety net for me to think, oh, well, Christians can't have demons. So I'm, I, I don't have them. But what, what was happening to me is is my life was being destroyed and I never understood why I 
prayed and read the Bible and still wasn't getting breakthrough, wasn't overcoming, wasn't, you know, after nine years of reading the Bible every day, why was I so thinking so many bad thoughts still? And I just didn't know that I needed deliverance and God by his grace opened my eyes and set me free. And the moment I went and had a deliverance session, the moment I left, I had never had my mind that clear without all these horrible thoughts depressing my mind that I just thought were me the whole time. I didn't know it was a demon until God graciously opened my eyes and showed me. I'm so grateful. That's why I'm so passionate about people that still have their eyes closed to the truth and that are stuck in religion and stuck in putting God in their own box and saying, no, Christians can't have a demon. No, this deliverance is wrong. No, you're wrong. Repent. Blasphemy in the Holy Spirit is serious. You know, if you don't believe me, like I said, take this to God yourself. There's one other scriptures I wanted to read um, because you know, if you, if you come against deliverance, you're coming against God. <clears throat> God calls deliverance a miracle. It's Mark 9, um, starting at verse 38. Uh, it's the scripture about anyone not against us is for us. John said, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will, will be able to uh, will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. In verse 39, when Jesus said, it said, but Jesus said, do not stop him for no one who does a miracle in my name will soon be able to afterwards speak evil of me. So right there uh, in Mark 9, verse 38, Jesus calls deliverance a miracle, casting out demons a miracle, and it is a miracle. And if you've ever... <laughs> Seeing the power of God move like that, it is so amazing and it, and it brings so much glory to God. Um, just seeing people get set free and, you know, so I just encourage anybody on here who's just having a really struggle in their heart with this matter about Christians having demons. I just, I just encourage you to get deep into prayer and ask God if you you know don't believe in deliverance and miracles are for today I I just encourage you to to have a simple question God if I'm wrong show me God loves to answer those prayers because he is he knows everything and we don't and I think barriers like I said can be just wanting to stay in a safety net or pride or, you know, just having received so much, so much false teaching that you're really putting that false teaching above the word of God, you know, maybe even taking a break from listening and just get into the word and ask Holy Spirit to open the scriptures up to you. Um, because the reality is, is that the, the Pharisees knew the, the word of God better than anybody and they missed Jesus Christ when he came so we don't want to get stuck in religion and miss like God so and we don't want to miss what the spirit of God is doing so I'm just going to pray father in the mighty name of Jesus I just pray for anyone watching this video anybody who's struggling to um have an encounter with your spirit to know the truth that sets us free i just pray father you send your spirit the spirit of truth i just pray you send your spirit upon your people take any uh anything that's brought deception remove that from your people i pray in jesus name i pray for repentant hearts that we would walk in the fear of the lord knowing that 
your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I pray that we would take our right place of humility before you, Father, knowing that you know everything and we don't and we need revelation, God, from straight from you. We thank you that we have the mind of Christ. I pray that we would be operating in the mind of Christ and that we would um, not blaspheme your Holy Spirit, that nobody in the body of Christ would um, be under this unforgivable sin, Lord, that if they are, that they would repent now and it's never too late. Um, for us to repent. Father, we thank you for that, that you give us um, our, our life on this earth. Um, Lord, so just, I just pray that the seriousness of this would um, be apparent by your spirit in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please um, ask in the comments below and I would love to give you any resources. And if you have any prayer requests, uh, feel free to comment them below as well. So God bless you all. Have an amazing day.